going to do right now is we have a lot of wholesalers that have some problems. They, they go from W-2, regular, taxes already done for you. Uh, they're usually ready to pay all their taxes. And uh, got a lot of people here. They will make 20 grand, 30 grand, 40, 50, 500,000 in a year. And uh, <laughs> the reason why, this is October, right? We got two months to the end of the year. A lot of you guys watching are a little stressed out. You know, you made 200 grand this year. And if you don't do it right, you're going to get hit with a lot of taxes. And so uh, one thing we're going to do is kind of, you know, talk with an accountant that actually knows about holding. Not a boring one, just somebody that helps save us a lot of money. I, I would say very, very worth it. So if you guys have made even one wholesaling deal, you should definitely use an accountant. And I, every video we do, we say, we're not accountants. We can't give you tax advice, anything like that. Uh, so what we want to do is talk to somebody and show you exactly how to make $0 payments in taxes the right counting so so, so guys you you have to pay attention to this part okay I do not give like legal and accounting if you think it's boring forget it you got to figure this out because most importantly you got to figure out how to keep your money so I'm gonna bring a gentleman up here I think you know since what 2004 five yeah 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 so I've known him like about a year and a half after I got into wholesaling and he knew Zach when he was a little tiny kid, and he's just kind of like, he's like, man, this is wild what you guys are doing. And to be honest with you, I've had some of the hardest conversations with this man, because it's like, sometimes like, you gotta have that dad go, and sometimes I said, you know, why we owe so much taxes and this and that, and you learn. Because when you guys think it's painful when you pay for direct mail and all this other stuff, and you go, what do you mean I owe 90 grand? I made 200 grand. What you got to figure this out because it can take out a lot of wholesalers. So I want you just to open your ears and listen. You listen to strategies. I told Bill today, I deal with wholesalers. This is what we do. We specifically collect assignment contracts. So I want to bring up Bill, come on up. He is the absolute expert when it comes to taxes. That's a quick You good? Okay. Got it. All right. I'm going to put my, uh, crystal light right over there, okay. People were looking at it earlier, I'm like, no, it's nothing good, it's just that cheap crystal light stuff. Uh, how's everybody doing today, good? Good? All right, you had lunch, everybody's got a little more energy, uh, long day today, this morning, right? A lot of stuff going on. You, uh, you guys, a little background with Rick. Rick saw me way back when. I've uh, done national speaking with some of the people you see on TV, Ron Legrand, uh, did it with uh, Armando Montalego, did it with many, many people. And the great thing is what they're doing is they're teaching you how to change your life, your family's lives. They're teaching you how to make all this money. I'm the guy that shows you how to keep it. Okay, so that's the big thing here. You guys are doing great with learning it, everything else going on. So I put together a presentation for you guys. And he was telling me on assignments, I love assignments. I wholesale as well. It's a really great thing to do. Um, it takes a lot of time. It does, learning this stuff and how to do it. So you want to keep track of what you're doing, how much time you're putting into it. If you think, like back in 97, I think I remember a commercial uh, Ron LeGrand put out, and he says, you only make one hour a day, one day a week, and make $1,000. Yeah, no, no, that's not true. You're not going to do that. But uh, you might get some really good deals, and once you get these really good deals, you got to cut Uncle Sam is a partner in all this stuff. Oh, that's not good. And a lot of people here, a lot of people have accountants that they go to or they have their taxes prepared and so forth, and they talk to the accountant and they say, hey, I'm getting into this. Uh, what do you think I should have? So I can tell you from over 30 years of experience that I cannot go ahead and tell any of you and make a blanket statement that this is what you should be doing because I don't know you. I don't know your financial situation. What might be good for this one might not be good for that one, and this one needs a totally different structure. Okay, because structure is everything, and that's what we're gonna be talking about today. And a lot of the accountants, they like to go ahead and say, oh, well, just go ahead and open up an LLC, you'll be fine. How many people have an LLC in here? Raise your hands, oh, I have got a lot of work to do today. Okay, <laughs> just about everybody. All right, LLCs, let's talk about a couple things here. Now, a lot of this stuff I might go to, I might stay away from, it's for your reference points to take a look at difference. There's differences between companies, LLCs, corps, and C-corps, okay? LLCs are completely weird. I don't like LLCs for people. 
I like LLCs if I'm going to joint venture, but I'm going to use my S or my C corporation to go in as that partner. Anyone here having a single member LLC, you're in for a rude awakening once you do your taxes. 30% of that money that you made goes to the government. Yeah, a lot of people don't know that. Partnerships, if you like to do a joint venture with someone and it's Bill and Dan in this joint venture, well, we made $200,000, so we got $100,000 each, right? $35,000 in taxes. Wow, what happens? LLCs are weird. Single member LLCs are the worst. Why are they the worst? Well, I'm gonna go through a couple, to talk to you about those. First off, they're part of your personal tax return. You file a form Schedule C with that. If you've seen that form, and then the Schedule SE, you've seen that before. Um, I hope none of you see that one. Uh, I want you to go ahead and look at the S Corporation or the C Corporation. This is a much better plan. This plan I use, okay, all the time, structure after structure after structure. I use multiple different companies for my deals. And I have one company that I'll go on every deal with you, but I got six more behind it covering these other properties and doing different things. It's a lot of fun once you figure out the puzzle. That's the big thing, it is a puzzle. See, accounting is boring. Debits, credits, appreciation, amateurization, blah, no one likes that. I wanna see how I can actually save you. How about paying no taxes at all while making $50,000 a year? I mean, $50,000 tax-free, that's pretty good. I'm gonna give you an example of what I have going on here for you. And uh, I'm gonna go with the right way on the clicker. There we are. Uh, LLC multi-member company self to, subject to self-employment tax. This is what I was talking about, that Schedule SE. It's a terrible, terrible thing. Multi-member company or partnerships members are individuals you pay self-employment tax to the profits based on your percentages. So again, if I make $50,000 and I'm gonna go ahead and just be a single person on that, I'm gonna pay 15.3% after I pay my ordinary income tax. If I'm just a single person and that's all I make for the whole year, I'm at 12%. So 12 plus the 15, now I'm at 27% I'm giving Uncle Sam. It's a lot of money, guys. Have the S corporations. Get these companies set up. Can you convert your LLC to an S corporation? Yes, you can. Filing the right paperwork, you're able to go ahead and convert that to an S corporation. You can only convert it, unfortunately, within the first three months of the time that you own the company or the first three months of the following tax year. So keep that in mind, too. So if you want to get something different, you, some people I have just opened up another company. Sometimes it's just easier to open up another company and be done with it, and they can do that. Self-employment tax, 15%. There's an exception to the rule. The tax is only generated on the ordinary income from the company. So if I have a single-member LLC that's taking rental income, and that's all it does, it doesn't pay self-employment tax. That's not the conference we're at today. You're at the wholesaling conference, or at the assignment conference, or at the ordinary income, you're gonna go ahead and pay self-employment tax on anything that you have, all right? When I do an LLC, I always go in, like I said before, as, as one of my companies will be a partner. Never Bill Tyler is a partner, ever, in any LLC. Is my subject self-employment tax with my company? No. My company will get a K-1, that's what's presented, a K-1 from the partnership, and I'll put that on my corporate tax return. Doesn't go on my personal tax return on Schedule C. Okay, so keep in mind of that. As corporations, and I, again, I know a lot of you have companies, and I try to gear these conferences as if you've never heard this before. So if I'm saying something and you have already know about it, I apologize, I just wanna make sure that everybody kinda of gets the drift of what's happening. So the S corporations are pass-through entities, meaning the profits and losses will pass through to an individual owner of the company. So if I make $50,000 and my assignment, when I get that person, whether it's $10,000 a, a click, $5,000 or $100,000, they're not gonna pay me, they're gonna write the check to my company. The title company is gonna wire to my company, not myself. Do not fill out a W-9 with your social security number on it. They will 1099 you. Make sure your company's name is on it and the EIN number only on those form W-9s because they're gonna want them. Anybody over $600 has to go ahead and pay the self-employment tax. But if it's given to a company, 
you're exempt. Good thing to know. Uh, let's take a look at here. Closed, T-corporations are closed. Anybody know about C-corporations? They're all flat tax right now. As of 2018, it's 21%. So on $50,000, I'm going to pay a little over 10 grand in taxes, and that's it, and that's all. It doesn't pass through to my tax return. For some of you, that might work. Well, yeah, I mean, I'm already in a 30% bracket. You know, I'm in a 28% bracket. I, you know, my, my wife's getting 400,000 on a W-2. I'm getting another 200,000. I'm doing this on the side. Oh, and you're gonna pay self-employment tax? Wow, you're looking like 40, 50%. The largest one I ever saw this year was 93. 93%, and he just wouldn't listen. I said, okay, do what you wanna do, and there it is. He goes, how am I paying 93% in taxes? Because you have this Schedule C thing going on. You're, you're the doctor. Uh, uh, I can tell you more stories and all that other good stuff. Uh, S corporations are subject to self-employment taxes. And S corporations enjoy a lot more benefits than an LLC. And this is going to be the fun part. Well, this is closing a company. This, uh, did I do that one? I keep going on the wrong way on my little clicker here. There you go. Uh, okay, so closing the corporation. This is what I was talking about, the 21% on the C corporations. They don't pass through to shareholders. They sit there with you. Has anybody heard of these C corporations having double taxation? Anybody? Yeah, it's like, well, I'm not getting one of those, man. They, they got to pay double taxes. Actually, as of 2013, they kind of don't, which is really cool. There's a thing called qualified dividends. And a lot of people hear about this when they own stock. Okay, and they're buying stock and that stock pays a dividend. Well, your C corporation could pay you a dividend as well. The cool thing is, if you're a single person and you have a C corporation and it's $40,000 that you have on there, yes, you're gonna pay 21% in taxes on that $40,000. When I take that money out as a dividend, that's tax-free up to $40,000 if it's qualified. What means who is qualified? Six months. So the money's gotta sit six months before you pull it. Now you got tax-free money. See, and this is all qualified dividend stuff. These are all C corporations. I don't wanna to get too much onto this, because there's a lot more things I want to talk to you about with states. You know, Florida has no income tax here. And most everybody here from Florida, a couple out of town people, a couple, somebody, uh, Tennessee, no taxes there. Well, if you're from North Carolina, where I live, okay, if you're from New York, <laughs> forget about it. You're just taxed all day and night. And if you're from Taxachusetts, you got big problems over there as well. <laughs> All right, so, so you guys understand state tax return. You know, it's funny, as a native Floridian, being here, I've enjoyed making all this money in our state, and then I go to another state. You want 3% too? You want 5% too? Who are you? Oh, well, it's a state. Well, I've never done that before. I've been in Florida all my life. So it's something you have to look at. Uh, Florida does have a corporate tax rate. So if you close that corporation, you have it in the state of Florida, and you make $100,000, the first 50,000 is exempt, but you will pay an additional 5.5% on that profit. Everybody's got their hand in your pocket, huh? And some states, they don't have any corporate taxes. Nevada, we have offices in Asheville, Nevada, and in Boca Raton. So I enjoy that tax-free stuff going out in Nevada. And I, Delaware corporations, you guys have heard of before, Wyoming, all this, Nevada, they're all the same structure. Same exact thing. There's no corporate taxes, no state taxes out there. A little different that they're going on. Let me go to the next one. Real estate structure. Keep it simple. Don't overthink it with your properties. Boy, ain't that a sin. I have so many people overthinking things all the time. I have some people that they have an LLC for every house that they own, and I have one client that owns 58 homes. 58 homes, 58 LLCs. I'm like, who lied to you, man? What are you doing? You know, it's just crazy. And I know I'm not supposed to talk about uh, stripping equity. We're not doing legal stuff. We're not doing protecting your assets. I will go into a little bit of that. But if you have a property out there and you don't have a mortgage on it, you might want to put an LLC on it. And then your holding company be the owner of the LLC and then file a construction lien against your property so that you're in first position if anybody were to sue you. Now that's a fun thing. That's equity strip. We did that back... 2003, 2005, all day long. Hopefully you learn a little bit more about equity stripping and so forth. Talking taxes, separate entities if I manage a property. If I buy a property in North Carolina and I live in Florida, can I set up a Florida LLC for the property? Yes, you can, but you have to register as a foreign corporation in North Carolina. 
always open up the LLC in the state that the, the property is located in. Always. Who the owner is of the LLC can be your Nevada, Wyoming, Delaware corporation. Remember, separate a lot of the stuff that you have. You don't have to go to the extreme like he did and have 58 different entities. Okay, you can go ahead and protect three or four entities with one corporation. You can do that. What I do is I use a thing called the dynamic duo. And I use one company that only holds, buys, sells, and holds property. That's all it does, and that's it. I have another company that manages the properties. So if I have a company that is a property management, it takes in all the rental income, and I go ahead and I'm paying my expenses through it, okay? Something happens. Florida was crazy. There was a thing in Florida. Ah, man, it was in the 90s. Someone was getting their house robbed. And the guy came through the skylight of the home, fell on the, on the, and hit a knife on the way down, and sued and won, and took the money from the homeowner. After that, everybody, some people know about that thing. It was absolutely crazy. They're like, are you kidding me? That's just insane. So yeah, you want to make sure that you protect your assets with IRAs, you protect your money, you have it in bank accounts, you don't have all your eggs in one basket. And again, you don't put all your houses in one basket. Matter of fact, in this one, with the dynamic duo, in this hypothetical situation, I'm gonna get an assignment fee, okay? And then I'm gonna interact with the separate corporations. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna walk you through how we're gonna get the assignment fees real quick. It's gonna be fun. Single individual who owns both corporations, that's the structure that I'm giving right now. So this is not for married filing jointly, not for head of household, only a single individual who owns both of the companies. And this uh, individual, for example, has no other taxable income for the year. Tax rates and examples are given as 2022 tax law. So it's pretty up to date for you. Here it is, my Corporation A. It's formed in the state of Florida. Its primary purpose is to buy, sell, and hold residential property. And all wholesaling properties do. Again, that means if I'm going to get an assignment, I'm going to get some money, it's going to be paid to this company. My other company that sits over here owns nothing and has nothing. It just sits on its own, does nothing. It's waiting for this to make money, okay? It, it can go purchase it, hold, sell, collect assignment fees. It does not manage any rentals, like I said, with that other company. That separate company is a whole rental company on its own. That's all it does, okay? So you don't want to do that for it. Here's Corporation B. This is your personal company for you and your, ta your family. This is taxed as an S corporation in this situation, so it's going to pass through to the individual owners for this example. So remember, S-Corps, profits and losses, all pass through to your personal. That's what's happening. Let's see what we got. This company collects rents, supervises construction for renovation, as well as it pays for all direct expenses for the company and indirect expenses for shareholders. It does not collect any assignment fees. Corporation A has received an assignment fee of $50,000. It hires Corporation B for consulting services and can be used to manage short-term and long-term rental property. So know what's happening is, Corporation A then is gonna have an invoice. Let's go here, there it is. Corporation A basically has an invoice for $50,000. The assignment fee is 50. Net profit is 50. We talked about that closed corporation, 21,500. Easy, done, 21%. I don't like it, I don't wanna pay anything. That's my kind of a thing. Corporation B wants some action over here. So, so again, has a profit of 50,000 in cash. Corporation B invoices Corporation A for management and consulting. Corporation B receives the 50,000 and reports it to income on its tax return. Okay, so you just kind of move money from one company to the other company. Yeah, that's what I did. Because this company just buys, sells, holds, receives assignments, okay? That's all it did. So Corporation B takes in the income. And we already know we picked up $50,000. We can conclude at this point, Corporation B has a net profit of 50,000 and that's gonna pass through to the individual and the individual must report it on their tax filing at the end of the year. But what about indirect expenses? Anybody heard of those? I love indirect expenses, they're my friend. They're your friend, okay? You're gonna love indirect expenses. You actually have them and you might not even know it. What could be as an indirect expense? Let's take a look at, what about an automobile? Anybody here lease a car? One, two, three people lease a car, great. Who's making the car payment, you or your corporation? Now you've learned the corporation's gonna be making the payment 
It's also going to pay for your insurance. It's going to pay for your gas. You have to spend this money anyway, right? You're going to have to do it anyway. So why not let the corporation pay for it out of corporation B? It's got 50 grand. Pay for it. So that is an indirect expense to you. If the vehicle is purchased by the company, it can be deducted of some of the costs to involve like sales tax, dealer prep fee, all that other good stuff, and has what's called depreciation. This year, 2023, unless they change it next month, uh, which is quite possible, they're giving you 80% okay, of a deduction for your car at $19,200. So here's the thing, if I go and have my lease, and I'm paying all year and I'm writing it off, right? My payment's are 500 bucks a month, $6,000 a year. At the end of the lease, here I am in November, I'm at the end, I gotta do something with it. What am I gonna do? I'm gonna buy it out. Interest rates are way too crazy. I got a good deal at my credit union. I'm just gonna buy it out for $23,000. Two cars are through the roof right now. You pay $23,000 for the car, you're gonna get $19,200 as an intangible expense in one year. Now multiply that by the 80%, so you're at like 17 and change. But nothing came out of your pocket. So depreciation is a good thing. We see that in homes all the time where they depreciate rental property. They're just not the greatest thing, rental property. It's 27 and a half years, I gotta wait to get to zero? That ain't gonna happen, all right? Anybody here have any rental properties? All right, good, good, good. A few people have rental properties. Anybody here, when you bought the rental property, did a cost segregation study? One person, thank you, Lord. that's beautiful, I love it. I do cost segregation studies, they're fantastic, and what they are is I bought the house for $250,000, but with the house came furniture, appliances, washer, dryer, all these things, I can get 100% depreciation on year one. I don't have to amateurize it over 27 years. You just gotta know what you have. Now what you will do, is you will buy property, you'll buy appliances with your rental property, you'll buy a new stove, you'll do this, and you'll have those ordinary expenses. And those ordinary expenses right now are 100% deductible in year one. Pretty good. But make sure you segregate what the cost of the house is, what the percent of the land is, and what about the stuff? I did a farm about two years ago, 81 acre farm in Texas, had tractors, uh, all kinds of beautiful stuff. She paid $1.3 million for the farm. We cost segregated out. She took a $540,000 deduction in year one. Wow, get half my money back. I haven't even done anything as a tax credit for depreciation. Other indirect expenses, let's talk about them. Telephone, use of a landline for businesses, cell phone for officers of a company and employees if there are any. Everybody pretty much has a cell phone nowadays. Okay, I got a couple on here, internet. Yeah, everybody's got internet, you gotta pay for that. So your company is gonna pay for that. Well, does the car, let me ask you about the car. Does the car have to be in my company's name to deduct it? No. You can act as a credit angel, okay, for the company and you secured that car with your credit. So you're still allowed to have the deduction. Pretty cool. Bank service charges, office supplies, website expenses. We can go all the travel. Everybody's traveling. Some people flew here today. Did your company pay for that ticket? It should have. Hotel, any rental cars, all that the company's paying for. So you see these indirect expenses are now becoming your friend too. Because you're seeing that you have to already go ahead and use it anyway. We have to spend the money. It's how you're going to spend it and who is going to spend it. And then what about meals? Well, this is tricky. And I got bad news for a lot of people in this place because those single member LLCs, can I go ahead and deduct a meal if I go out to Chili's for a burger or two and I stop and get a meal, can I have my company pay for it? No. What? A single member LLC cannot have a business meeting with itself. Therefore, that meal you cannot deduct. Oh, well, I've been paying for meals with my, my business card and I'm a single member. Oh, this is crazy. What am I gonna do? Can it deduct it for an S corporation? Oh yeah, you can deduct it for an S corporation. Remember, separate entity. S corp, C corp, separate than that LLC. Again, they're weird. 
Can it deduct a meal if I have a partnership with Rick? If Rick and I go out to dinner with the partnership, absolutely. We can have the company pay for it. If I'm with a prospective client in a single member LLC, can I go ahead and still deduct it? You can, but see, IRS, they're getting smarter, man. They, they are. I, I've been, again, doing this stuff for a very long time, and I've seen a lot of stuff in my time, and they're actually, okay, well, we want a, a meal lo a logbook. A what? A meal logbook. If you're a single member LLC, you have to go ahead and show that $17 that you paid with you and your friend, that receipt. Well, it's on my credit card. That's fine. Who were you with? I don't remember. It was two years ago. Okay. We're not allowing that. Next. And we'll do this time after time and time. If you're an S corporation, you can have that meal because it's separate. Okay, so again, another great reason why to be an S corporation. Uh, let's take a look here at meals. So I talked about those. These are a couple sections for those of you who are recording and stuff, and you can see the different, and you can look all this stuff up. Uh, the expense is not lavish or extravagant under the circumstance. This is a very gray area. If my wife and I were to go out to dinner and spend $740, they would have an issue with this. But I can, we talked about business, you, you go over that lavish thing. If I had my six employees go out and spend $700, could I deduct that? Well, yeah, that, that makes more sense. It's not gonna be over the top. But it was a five-star Michelin restaurant. I hope you had a great time, it's not deductible. And that's just what they think and that's what they're saying. Okay, food and beverages are provided to a current potential business customer, client consultant, or civil business contact. Here's a really cool one here, and, and I had a case on this one, and that number six should be like number six down here. My case was the, they took out their clients and they bought Florida Panther tickets, okay? And they gave a promotion. Every time one of the new car buyers bought a car, they got tickets to the Panthers game and a $50 voucher for food as a little spit. The guy's like, look, I had to buy all these tickets. I had to do all this stuff. Can I deduct that? Here's the answer. You can deduct it as long as you don't go to the game with the person and you document who you gave those tickets to. And if that value is over 600 bucks, guess what? You got a 1099 that guy. Wow. So make sure those gifts and stuff, actually the, the law for individuals is gifts can't be more than $25 per individual. What is that? You can't go to the movies for $25 for a couple people, you know? It's, it's crazy what they've got, but it is true. Let me go on here and get back to my thing here. Can the car Okay, so this is a couple things that I went through. Can the corporation deduct meals with my spouse? Yes, if they're an officer of the company. Well, my, my wife is an officer of my company. Can I still deduct it? No. Is she an employee? Well, no. Well, then she can't do it. Why not make your wife a part owner of the company? Well, you know, <laughs> uh, things might be not going that great. I don't know, man. You know, it's, uh, who knows? And, and I don't want that to happen. I, I understand. But you got married in Florida. Both of you get in half, so just deal with it. <laughs> so it's just the way it is. Can I go ahead and make my kids an owner of the S Corporation? Yeah, you actually can over the age of 16. Cool. Super cool. The one good thing for single member LLCs, there's only one, and this is a really weird law, and look it up because you're going to be like, I got to record that because I don't believe that's real. And it's so is real and it's odd. I'm able, if I have a single member LLC, I can pay my children $12,000 if they're under the age of 18 and live with me and deduct it on my tax return on Schedule C. That is a real law. That is crazy, right? I ain't giving my kids $12,000. I'm going to tell you that. Now I want the deduction. Okay, I want to take that deduction, I want to do it, great. Why don't you go ahead and write the check for 6,000, put it in their Roth IRA and start building up their retirement account. Happy birthday, you know, Merry Christmas. Different things like that. See, we don't think like that. I didn't go through a bit of my background. I'm from a family of accountants, okay? Easter, we didn't get candy. We got series EE -E bonds. <laughs> this was not fun. This was Easter, you're supposed to have this no, 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 you're going to really like this. Here, take this. What is this? What can I do with it? I can't play with it. Nine years old. What are you talking about? So, so yeah, it's, 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 I've heard this stuff, and I've been doing this stuff for a very long time, and even as a child, I'm, uh, 
I'm 54 now, and the first time that I filed a tax return for someone else and got paid for it, I was 15. Mm, too long, man. I've been doing this a long time. And again, like I said, I'm from a family of accountants, and I remember the only the thing why that happened is because I was off of school, and it was tax season, and there were people in the lobby, and my dad was the accountant, my mom was the secretary. He was running behind it, like, I can't wait any longer. I gotta go. I said, no, no, no. What, what is he gonna pay? Look, it's simple. It's a $40 return. This is 1980-something. I'll, I'll do it. And I grabbed him, put him in the back, and I did it. My dad was furious, furious. I can't believe you did this. I can't, where's the copy? And we used carbon copy with the typewriters back then. It was crazy, right? Ledger sheets rolling down the hallway. That was awesome. It's like bowling, it was great. And I did it and I gave you, he goes, well, you're damn lucky this is right. Let me just tell you. And where's the money? I said, mom has it in her bra. Oh, what? <laughs> that was a whole other discussion. So yeah, um, different things you can do. I wanna go back to my example. I wanna get through this for you guys. Here it is. So I did indirect expenses over 12 months. This is a really good example, and I think I used a lot of fair numbers. There's a lot of people that use outrageous numbers. Uh, well, you know, 100,000 in meals. This is, this is simple, okay? Internet and telephone, 2,700 bucks, you know, a year, yeah? Auto lease, gas repairs, you know, that includes oil changes, insurance, nine grand, professional fees, Okay, website expenses, travel, 6,000, office supplies, rental space. Okay, and in 2018, they did change the law, okay, and they made meals at restaurants 100% deductible. They are 50% deductible in 2023. So for all my accounting people that I take care of, I had to separate restaurant or was it delivery dues? And that was a pain in the butt. But yeah, I had to separate everything because we had to count what was 50% and what was actually in restaurants. This year, restaurants delivery, all still 50%. So you can see, after a whole year, $35,000 is pretty much attainable. It's not like, uh, you know, crazy outlandish that's going on. So Corporation B, remember, has 50,000 income for the year. It has indirect expenses of 35,000. Corporation B has a net profit of 15, and it passes through to the tax return. There it is. So the tax return is, is not there. I must have clicked the wrong button. There it is. Oh, oh, here it is. I got it back. There we go. Here it is. Your single individual tax return for this person. $15,000 was his profit. QBI. Wow. Section 199A. Anybody know about this? This is a new thing for a lot of people. This started in 18 as well. For S corporations and Schedule C people that were not accountants, doctors, or lawyers are able to take 20%, 20% as a deduction on their profits for their S corporations and Schedule Cs. Make sure if you do have them from last year and you see them, I right, make sure that you take this stuff, look at it, make sure the accountant went ahead and did Section 199A for you. It would be on your page 11040, right underneath where your corporation profit is. Look at it, it's sitting right there. He's got it here, his taxable income is 12,000, the standard single deduction is 12,950. He's an S corporation, so he doesn't pay self-employment tax. He has a no taxable income, and he made $50,000 and lived on it for the whole year. Didn't partner with Uncle Sam. Wow, can we do that with 100? Yeah, 200, yeah. Millions, sure. It can be done. You just gotta have the information. And that's what I'm here today to do, is to give you the information so that you're able to ask an intelligible question. A lot of people go ahead and say, well, I, I don't know about that. Um, why didn't my accountant tell me that? Uh, I can't answer for that person. I can only answer for what I'm doing and, and seeing what you did. I wish I met you earlier. Yeah, I, I wish I met you too, So, but uh, this is where we're at. And just like now, here it is October. You guys have done deals. Some of you have done deals before. Some of you have, and this is my digital uh, business card there for you guys. Uh, so it's easier just to go ahead and see and contact me. Uh, questions I love. Uh, I know that we don't have a lot of time for them at this time, Rick. I gotta, am I going on to something else or do I have any time? I'm good to go. All right, yes, sir, in the question. You know, it's a great question. If you buy the car cash, uh, can you take the deduction? Well, here's the thing. If it's a $23,000 car, 
The only thing that you can do is take that $19,200 depreciation bonus, even if you pay cash. But if it is a SUV or a truck, over 6,000 pounds, gross vehicle weight, over 6,000 pounds, all right, you can deduct 100% of it last year. This year is 80%, the following year is gonna be 60, and then they're gonna knock it down to zero the next year. So now's the time, if you need a car, to go ahead and get it. Anybody else? Yes, sir. Right. They get to uh, count the square footage of the room, or how does that work? Yeah, so that's a great question. I didn't put it on there. Um, what I like to do is called a safe harbor deduction. Make sure you write that down and know that safe harbor deduction. What, you, what they did is you could go ahead and take the room in your office, divide it by the square feet, and then I got my gas, my utilities, my cable, my this, and all this is here. But the problem is, is when I go to sell my house, I lose what's called a section 121 exclusion that allows me to keep as my primary house and I'm able to go ahead and not pay capital gains on 250,000, I lose it because it was technically a business asset for that percentage. They changed the law two years ago, safe harbor deduction, 1500 flat fee, use it and that's it. And you can't take the deduction unless you have a profit on schedule C. S corporation is gonna pay for everything anyway. Sure, can, can your S corporation pay you a fee for the rent? You could, but then you gotta claim it as income. How about if you're renting a place and you have a corporation, and how about you go ahead and have the rent, okay, here it is. Not a property management company won't do it, but I'm doing a deal with Rick. I'm, Rick, I'm gonna go ahead and rent it to you. We agreed on 2,500 bucks a month. Here's a list grade. Can I add my corporation to that? Sure. Can I deduct it? Yeah. The whole thing? My corporation is on to the lease. That is an interesting thing. I want some more good questions. Yes, sir. So that's the depreciation. So let's say, for instance, you got, and I don't need any numbers. I know money is very particular to some people, and that's why I say I can't do general stuff, but email and everything else and questions for your particular situation, I love. And in your particular situation, with your car that you bought that's there, if you financed it, uh, you can still take more than, it's about the purchase price of the car, not about how much you paid in. So I can go ahead and buy that car in November, put $2,000 down, and still take a $19,000 deduction in January. Absolutely, yeah. I can't go before I had the company, only the time after the company. And the last question was, as far as like, uh, insurances, um, yeah. I know they do the auto insurance. Yeah. For like for personal, since I'm an S Corp and I'm a W employee. Oh, I love it. And if I do life insurance policy and mm. health insurance, mm. would I be able to do that? No. Okay. Health insurance, yes. Life insurance, no. Why? Because it's not taxable when it's received. So you can't, you can't deduct it there. There is another insurance, talk to your broker about key man insurance. Key man insurance, people can pay for key board directors or officers. That's how you get like extra life insurance and things like that. My wife and I were going over that and I'm like, yeah, well, they're only offering up to $50,000, you know, in this key man insurance. And she just looked at me like I was crazy for 50,000. I said, I'm not paying for your new boyfriend. Get the hell away from me. I know it's not happening. Yes, sir, right back there. I got you next. Now that I know that I probably not never saying that. <laughs> How are they taxed? Yeah, that's the problem. That, and that's why I hate LLCs, right, yeah. No. Yeah, so, so there, would have, there was a form you would have filed called 8832. 8832 is a designation of entity classification. That tells the IRS how you're gonna be taxed. Corporation, uh, if you're gonna do an S Corp, or even to converting it, that 8832 form, fill that out first. Okay, to convert it to a corporation, and then after it's done, you can write this down. The other form is 2553. That will then turn it into an S corporation. But IRS is so far behind, you know, so in your situation, you've already got the two. You're not sure how it's taxed. Um, does any of those forms sound familiar or no? Okay. So yeah, you've got two LLCs that are probably single. Are you on it, married? No? I'm married. So you got two single member LLCs. Yeah. Double trouble, got it. Mm -hmm. I, also, I also did something that I know now probably wasn't smart, but mm -hmm. I, oh well, <laughs> we'll find out. Um, I bought a 65 SS Impala, and mm -hmm. I put a ton of work into it, mm -hmm. uh, parts and stuff like that. Sure. So, you know, how much of that is uh, tax 
So does your company does your company own the car? Yeah, uh, I own the car. But is it for a company? Does your company do that stuff, car to car stuff? Marketing. Okay, it does marketing with it. Great, love it. Put it under advertising. Fantastic for professional fees. And I would have one LLC own it, and then have the other LLC pay that other LLC. Don't say for car, make a payment. So you're going to move money from one to another. It's a loan from you. Let's be honest. But the way that you've got it set up and structured, you kind of don't really get the deduction. I'm either a, moving it from A to B or B to A. If it's a, if it's a separate entity, then you would, it would help you, it would pass through. But because you're both single member LLC, it's kind of a wash. So what you might wanna do is with another corporation, designate it just to pay for that specific stuff for marketing. Yes, sir, you had a question. Very, very smart, good question. Yeah. I'm setting up a brand new wholesaling operation from scratch. Good. Right before I met Rick. Yeah. Okay. He recommended setting up an LLC mm -hmm. in the state I was doing business with, mm -hmm. owned by a Wyoming LLC mm -hmm. as the sole member of the operation. Cool. It's, That's great. Is that, but I, I don't know where the S corporation would come in. Should I change my structure? So, well, so here's the interesting part. S corporations can only be owned by individuals. That's it. You can't have an S corporation own it, but in your structure here, you're telling me, and the question, if you guys heard it, he has two different companies. Uh, not one company is here, does the action. The other one is a holding company in Wyoming. Wyoming holding company over here. So when this company does its tax return per se that's going on, it's gonna pay over to Wyoming. But here's your problem. It sounds like you're single member. Do you have one member or two? In Wyoming? No, in, in the other corporation. The operating corporation, yeah. the only member is the Wyoming LLC. That's it, that's there. So whatever it's gonna pass, it'll pass through to that company and then that company will do its tax return based on that. No, it doesn't, no, it won't because then you wouldn't be able to have it owned by, the Wyoming Corporation could pass through to you. I don't know your taxable, your tax thing. You're making 50,000, 100,000, I don't know. So the if it does, the, the money sits in the Wyoming LLC that you loan to it, correct? Right. All right, and it's gonna go ahead and buy things? Correct. Okay, great, so then the Wyoming's gonna own it and then you have your operating company that's doing his things over here, correct? Correct. And that, thump, that company's doing what? Okay, so we know that it should be the assignment company should go to that other Wyoming corporation, not to this corporation here. Mm -hmm. So you don't have property, you just do an assignment fees. You remember my example that I gave you uh, was uh, the corporation A, all it does is buy, sell, hold, and gets whole, and wholesale assignments. That's the one that's gonna get the fees. Your other corporation doesn't really sound like you need it. Okay, it can be anywhere. It doesn't have to be in Florida. I understand. Mm -hmm. So I was assuming, obviously this might be wrong, but that I would start moving through consulting fees or whatever else, revenue from the Florida LLC to the Wyoming LLC. If the Wyoming LLC had expenses. Okay, so then yeah, do that. That would be how you go. it. Yes? So I'm structured the investing way, probably at the same tax place. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so Wyoming is a non mm -hmm. and so that was a way to keep anonymity. Um, mm. The only anonymity you have, my friend, in the United States is the state of Nevada. Why? Do you know the answer? Well, my understanding the is answer is because I are okay. my LLC, mm -hmm. that all they're going to keep is my other LLC. Mm -hmm. And then they look up to that LLC and then they just see the registered non agent. Non but the registered agent's there, right? Um, you have to have a registered agent. Exactly, exactly. And that's who the IRS will go to and it has to give them disclosure who you are. Yeah, Nevada is the only state, a lawyer. You have a lawyer come in, why wouldn't a lawyer go ahead? I'm really tax stuff. Let me talk to somebody, get me some tax records. It's very easy to break that, that corporate veil with it, but Nevada is the only state that has a non-sharing agreement with the Eternal Revenue Service. I cannot go ahead and pitch the tax returns or ask for the tax returns from them in that state. I can from every other, other state in the United States. Yes? So to a similar tie-in yep. here, I've got Nevada um, LLC mm -hmm. right now, and so if I wanted to, you know, I just retired from my second job here this year, mm -hmm. last month, so I want to put a new structure together, so this is a great time. 
So I would put together then the S Corp in Nevada and then the new S Corp in Nevada. You don't, it depends on where you live. Remember, what, what, what you're getting confused is that we need another corporation in the state of Florida if I'm buying rental property, a tangible asset in the state. Can my non Nevada corporation take a assignment fee from North Carolina? Of course it can. I didn't own any property there. It's not a property. So the only time that you need that extra entity is when you have a tangible asset. That's what we talked about, the rental property. So I can establish a LLC in Arizona then to hold the hold property and things like that. To hold property, not assignment fee, not right. Assignment, yeah. Correct. So essentially what I could do then is I can create a Arizona company to pick up the assignment fees that would be paid to the S Corp in Nevada. That would be def deflect it away from your income. Yeah. Sure, yeah, and being retired, you probably have pension, social security, all kinds of other great yeah, stuff, so that all adds up, and it's what you have to take it in consideration. That's why I put that digital business card up there, is because it's better to go ahead and just ask some of these personal ones, you know, than, you know, getting into what you have, because every answer is gonna be different and the structure is gonna be different. Yes, ma'am. So I'm from Canada, I'm starting my hotel business. Awesome. So that's a great, great question. So you have to establish some type of entity in the United States. Nevada is another state, Wyoming is one, Delaware is one, that you do not have to be a US citizen to own the corporation, but you do have to use an ITIN number, and that's, that's how you set it up. You don't have to be a citizen. I don't know if Florida's like that or not. I'd check with like a Florida attorney uh, to see if they can, if you don't have to be a citizen, but I know in those states you don't have to. Yes, sir. Yeah, so land trusts are big. They were way big back in the 90s and 2000s, and, and irrevocable trusts are another great way to have them. Uh, yeah, that's all legal protection stuff to make sure that people can't come after your assets, and it would be in a revocable land, land trust you can buy with. Here's a crazy thing. Back in the 80s, and, and Rick knows this guy, he was teaching people to open up the land trusts, okay, to buy their properties for anonymity and never record them. Well, you, then it's not a trust. What's wrong with you if you don't record it? Oh, no, and he was teaching every, had people eating out of his hand, $2,000 a pop. And it was in Miami. So have I said that, Rick probably remembers the guy. But yeah, it was land trust this, land trust that. So that's a legal thing, and it, they're great to have in. You can have irrevocable trust too, and have the irrevocable trust own the property, and then you don't have to go ahead and, and worry about paying capital gains on that when you sell it, because it's in your irrevocable trust. Just remember, you can't change the irrevocable trust. That's more of a lawyer thing. Check with a lawyer about that. Last one. What do you got? So I was leading to a question. Okay, um, sorry. <laughs> no worries. So um, I started my my LLC in March. Mm -hmm. So I'm obviously past the first three months. So I have to wait till um, next year. Correct. It will be January, February, March 15th is your deadline for this year to convert them. Okay. So sometimes. In March of 15th, yeah, that's when you have to convert them. Um, yeah, so yeah. You can still convert before having to file for 23. You can't convert for 23 when he had it in March for 23. I can convert it for the tax year 2024. Gotcha. Yeah, and it literally says it on that form 2553. It says effective date because your incorporation date might be in 2017, but the effective date would be 1 1 24. Right. Well, that's it. Indirect expenses and some direct expenses. That's it. Look, guys, thanks a lot. I really appreciate your time. If you have more questions, emails, let me know. Thank you. you got it. Thank you, sir. Let me get that from you. Oh. Okay, guys, so you got Bill's information. Here's a, you don't have to be an expert on taxes, but if you do ignore this, it is like when you decide you don't want to go to the dentist anymore. You are going to be in for a root canal, and it's going to be painful. Okay, so you you once you start to grow, the idea is to find a way to make the money, but you can't ignore the tax thing because there's deadlines. If you guys ever work with the IRS, I'm always trying to fix something. It is a six to nine month process just to change one form. It just drives me nuts. So get out, talk to people. And then as you're going into 2024, it's okay if you got a screwed up plan, just have a plan to fix it. And I relied on Bill for a long time. Um, I'm really good at wholesaling. I'm average at taxes. I just, I wanna make sure it's legal and I don't want the IRS calling me and I want all the deductions I humanly can possibly get. And he used to walk through and go, hey, you gotta do this, you gotta do that. I've, I fought it the entire way. And now it's like, 
Now I do all pre-planning. You have a choice. Partner with the government or you can use the money for your future. You're going to pay either one of them. You don't have a choice. So most of the deductions and stuff you do, you can use towards creative strategies that are 100% legal and will take care of your family and give you liquidity options, all sorts of things you would never even dream of. Guys, when you have a corporation, I'm not telling you have to, but you get the same benefits as Apple, Pepsi, all these people. See, you've got to read the rules to the game. Once you get here and you have an awakening and get it, then you've got to read the rules. You can't decide to bury your head in the sand when it comes to money. Money rewards those that pay attention to it. And if you don't pay attention to it, it will be gone from you fast. So if we're going to learn how to earn the money here, but importantly, you've got to grow and find a way to keep the money because there's no point in making a million dollars and just giving it away to Uncle Sam because that's what most of you do right off the bat. So if you do nothing, there is a tax in the United States It's basically a third of all your income's going. And if you add up all the other crap of sales tax, everything else, you're going to give away half of every dollar you ever earn. So you have to make a decision. You can either go, well, I'm not going to pay the government anything. I'm not going to work or find a good CPA, someone that can help you work through it. You've got to find somebody that specializes in real estate investing. And if you can find someone who specializes in wholesaling, because guys, you are getting most of your money through assignment of contracts when you start. Your accountant needs to understand this. You got to understand the difference between ordinary income and investment income. It is completely different. And I screwed this up in the beginning and I'm just telling you. Then we'll have a further talk down the road and tell you how to do, uh, how to keep your bookkeeping and everything like that. You have to keep it up. Because I, I'm going to tell you a little story. When I used to do it, uh, I did, I got so busy in wholesaling. I used to look at my wife in like August, October. I'm like, we better start. This is when I was younger. We better start doing some accounting. And it was just, it's the most awkward, uncomfortable conversation with a CPA when you're not organized. They're like, and he's like, just pay this tax amount. And I'm telling you, do not get squished in a corner. I have to dedicate X amount of hours every month to go through all the accounting. And then I meet with everybody and I do it. And I had to become completely comfortable reading financial statements. And it's just not profit and loss. You've got to understand a balance sheet. And guys, there's, just learn it, okay? I'm not going to teach this stuff, but I'm telling you, I had to learn it the hard way. You've got to know where your money is, how it works, and you've got to find a way not to pay Uncle Sam everything. Because if you do nothing, Uncle Sam, that's why they love a W-2 employee, because they will take just about everything you've got. And I, I've lived it. I've been on both sides of it. It's absolutely crazy.